Mega Theist, co-host of Pictures at an Exhibition, and also a co-producer of the Art Salon, a series of events throughout the Pioneer Valley celebrating contemporary artists. Today, we are at the Amherst Visitor Center, and as the name already implies, if you want to come visit Amherst, come here, get all the information you want. Uh, it's an historic building right in the sm smack in the middle of the uh, greens in Amherst. And now we are going to turn to Fran Corriveau, our uh, painter of today. Welcome, Fran. So nice to have you here. Thank you. So you are a painter that started fairly late in her career. Is that correct? Very late, yes. And we are now in front of one of her first pieces. And she just told me that she threw out the other pieces that were like more like exercises. But this <laughs> is the first one. That's the first one I kept. You know? Yes. Yes. So why did you keep it and what did you do with it? Well, at the time, I thought it was really great. And um, I managed to have something that looked like something. I, you could tell that this is a beach. There are flowers. I, I was really very pleased with it. And I've kept it to remind myself of how far I've come in the few years. It's, it's, this was 2013 that I did this. And I had never drawn anything. I had never painted anything at all. So why did you start painting? Well, I, um, I became very, very ill and had to retire early. I was 61 years old. And uh, the doctor told me that uh, I would do better if I had, if, if I, um, sorry, some, I still have brain damage. I have brain damage. And so um, the doctor told me that it would be good if I developed new neural pathways. And since I had never done anything like painting, well, I almost took French um, because, but then I'd, I had taken French before, so it wasn't totally new to me. And I really didn't think that I was going to like it. I thought it was going to be an exercise, something I was doing to, to, to make myself feel better about, about life, and which seemed rather dull and, at that point. And I, anyway, it changed everything. Uh, it's changed my life. And so I, I can go on a long time about this. So, <laughs> uh, so you started painting on a daily basis? Well, how did that go? How did well, you make it in a part of your life? I, I painted when I could, when I was well enough. And uh, sometimes I painted when I was in bed. I had little five by sevens and a push shot box. And I would paint from there. Uh, I took lessons whenever I could. Uh, so on one point, you must have gotten really much better because these are all landscape and outdoor paintings. Are right. you painting in plein air, or are you doing this from memory at home? Some of them are plein air, and some of them are not. Um, I'm going to, uh, yeah. let's see. Uh, this one is, is partially plein air. It's uh -huh. um, the Chias River in Maine. And um, I spend summers on Campobello Island. One of the reasons I wanted to paint was because I love the island so much. And so, um, Painting it became a natural thing for me, and I really enjoyed that. Um, this is also the Machias River, a different light, and much earlier. You can see the difference in the way that things are going. This was a studio painting, and on uh, my very first nocturne, and uh, I keep it. I, it's not for sale. I, I just put it up there so you could see the difference between. Uh, and uh. Yes, and I think you can absolutely see a certain progression mm -hmm. in your style and mm -hmm. in your expertise on how to handle the brush. Right. That's so we are just walking down the wall just a little bit, and above us is another image of the ocean. And I think this is all going to, and this is, was done in Maine as well? Actually, New Brunswick. New Brunswick. New Brunswick. So you can really see in this image the ocean crashing onto the sea. You see the green, cold water, the sandy beach, and the deep pine forest behind. And when did you do this in relationship to one of your first images? I did it last year. 
Yes. Last year. Yes. So it is still a, a very short period of time mm -hmm. for an artistic, artistic development mm -hmm. to uh, arrive at an image that is full of energy and, uh, and, and the, the, the energy of the ocean, yes, the ocean is very well captured in this image. Well, the ocean, you know, I mean, it's ever present. And I spend the summer there and I watch the ocean a lot. And um, it becomes easier to document this painting, I had many reference photos. I did not use just one because the a wave, it, a wave is a, it's like a, uh, it's like a living thing. It changes so much that you can't just take one. Well, you could, but it would not. It would be static. It would not be. At, you know, tr I was trying for motion. So. So you're looking so much at waves. And I would. I'm just sitting there in my chair painting the wave, you know. <laughs> well, it's living precariously, I can imagine. Yeah, so that's quite nice, though. <laughs> so, uh, in what way uh, has painting now uh, affected your physical uh, condition? Well, it gave me a whole new pair of eyes. Uh, so, for instance, I was bordering on depressed over this whole situation, and I suddenly begin to see things in a different way. I see the light now. You know, I, I, might, I might notice that the light falls over that window or whatever is in my, um, in my field of vision. Where in the past, I just barrel through life. I was a businesswoman. I have an MBA and I was a businesswoman and I was always trying to succeed and do, you know, do, 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 do. And now I don't. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's wonderful, really. And, um, you know, like clouds, like watching clouds. You, you can make a whole life out of that, you know, if you want to. Many people do, I think. <laughs> I, think I, I think people do, and I'm, I think they're very happy when they do that. So, you know, for me, it, it's really improved my, uh, my way of being. I also, uh, it's meditative, and, and I think that part of the brain because I, I got to be very, um, what's the word I want, out of focus. I, 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 was, I couldn't remember what I was doing half the time. And I'm, I'm much better. And I, I, it's partly, definitely this, also meditation. But, you know, yeah. same things. Yeah. So there's one image in this wall of landscapes. And they're mostly seascapes. There's one image that sits apart, stands apart for me. And that is a wooden scene, and you see the ocean in the background, and you have this sense of being in the woods, and you are looking at this meadow, and it is full of doubled light. And that's an interesting new element in Fran Corivore's uh, paintings that are here on this wall. Fran, was it an experiment, or was it something you had worked on before already? Because now you are seeing not the ocean, but now you actually you are doing something with light that you have done before. Well, I, I was trying to do something with light. Yes, I, I, it was a, uh, it was an experiment, really. But I, I uh, was a, this is this was actually t uh, done in uh, Lubeck Quadi. It is Quadi is. Uh, Beside the ocean, there's a park there. There's a, a lighthouse. It's uh, a, the tourist center. But along the there's a road along, and um, we paint there. I mean, you know, just paint there. And so I did that. Um, the light it was afternoon light, and the, it was coming through the trees. And I tried very hard to capture just how it felt to be. It was warm June afternoon. So. Yes. I think it really comes across because there are a couple of hints of flowers, the grass, the light, you feel the air moving, and you also see in the back the ocean. Yes, and the ocean is, yes, ever present. Ever present. <laughs> yes. So let's move to some other ocean pictures in a second. So now we are on the opposite side of the visitor center exhibition space. And we are looking at a painting that's quite different from uh, the earlier painting that Fran uh, had created. This one is from Florida and it has a very dynamic, loose, uh, explosive brush stroke. So <laughs> what made you do this in this particular way, which is pretty unusual from what you've mm -hmm. done before? Well, again, because I'm so new, 
I get to try stuff, you know. And um, I read things, and I think, oh, maybe I could do that. So um, I watched the breakwater. Um, we were living at the beach, so it was very helpful. And so the breakwater um, at Volano Beach it has huge waves sometimes. And actually, Volano Beach has huge waves anyway. Campobello has more gentle surf. You know, the other one that I, I did that was looking kind of really surfy was after a storm. Um, but, you know, Volano Beach, regular every day, looks like you had a really bad storm. <laughs> and so the breakwater, um, the waves crash. And so I kept, um, I, I watched it, you know, um, day after day, day after day. And then, and then I, took, I took reams of pictures. And then I just did my best. And one of the things that I like about it is it was a sunny day and the blue and the color of the rocks um, captured my heart. I really like that. It is a really well done uh, image because you're not only seeing the, the surf crashing into the rocks, but you see also how the waves then recedes. And right in front of the beach, there is this calm, almost mirror-like mm -hmm. image of the water. So it brings attention into the painting that otherwise it would be you know, a painting of crashing uh, water. But now you have this two different behaviors of water, which makes it really interesting. Ah, well, see, I didn't know that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fran, you're not only spending time at the beach, you're also spending some time at home, right? Home is the Pioneer Valley for you. Yes, it is. And you are also having here in this space some landscape that have no ocean in them. Right. It's more closer to home. Right. Was that a, uh, a new idea that you wanted to, uh, to look at, like woods and, and, and the more New Englandy woody landscape, or is this just something that um, crept into this particular exhibition? Well, this painting is a, a result of several failed paintings. Um, autumn foliage is really hard, and um, it, it's hard to not overstate it. I, uh, this is actually Amherst, and um, I, I spent a lot of, well, like, about three paintings before I undertook it because it was um, difficult for me. And it's not just the foliage. I mostly was terrified of trees, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I'm now used to the ocean, but <laughs> trees, <laughs> holy God. So, and so I took on, a, of course, I took on a whole bunch of them, you know. So um, that, that really was, is very, was very, very um, hard for me. It took me a long time to finish it. And I'm, I'm proud that I managed to finish it, because lots of times, if it got really hard, I would put it aside. So it's kind of a triumph, really. Yeah. So. yeah. And sometimes you put something aside, do you, do you discard them right away or at some point, or do you pick them up and work some more on them? Well, there's, there's two fates for them. Some of them get finished eventually. Um, Sometimes if I have a class, I'll take them to class and get some uh, guidance. Other times, um, they're just really not much hope for them. And so then I take them to Campobello and burn them in the fireplace. <laughs> 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 well, these guys were, are definitely wonderful paintings and, uh, and absolutely uh, a delight to see. And we're glad you didn't put them in the fireplace. <laughs> uh, so this show is up for a little while longer. And again, I didn't do my homework. How long is the show, Fred? Oh, till the end of the month. To the end of the month. It's March. So uh, please come and uh, visit the visitor center and see Fran Corey Wo's paintings. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you.